Hey, it's Chris here, and I just wanted to share some of my initial impressions of using Cursor for iOS development. I've used it for about two days, and I wrote down a couple of thoughts here. So I've, I want to go through what I've tried, what I've yet to try, and some pitfalls I've encountered. But the general gist of it is that I've been blown away with what it can do. Because I've used ChatGPT like this to ask it specific things. And this has also saved a lot of time Googling. You used to have to look for tutorials or documentation to find specific answers. But using ChatGPT, typing your question, you get a code snippet, you get a direct answer, saves a ton of time. But using something like Cursor that is an ID that just scans all of your project files, has context, you can not only ask it for advice, but you can just ask it to do stuff and it can modify your code for you. So I'm just blown away. Let me show you some of the stuff I've done. So what I've tried is having Cursor look at an existing project. So this is my hackathon app that I built. It's essentially a daily logging or daily to-do type of app. That's how you can think of it. And I opened it inside Cursor. And so it sees all of the project files. And then on this right hand pane here, I can ask it to do different things. So, so let me show you some of the things that I've done that I didn't have to write any code for. I'm just reviewing the code that it wrote and then applying the changes. So for example, in this reminders, I didn't have date selection. So I just had pick a time and I would schedule it for every single day. But then I asked it, hey, can you improve this feature so that the user can select specific dates that he or she wants to get reminders for? And it was like, sure, I'll do that. And then it just spat all the code out here. And then what you can do is you can hit apply and it will highlight, this is the actual code file. And it will highlight all of the additions in green, all of the deletions in red. And then you just hit accept changes and that's that. There you go. So it was able to implement this and it's working. It even changed some of the text here. I had this saying, you'll receive a reminder at this time every day. It even needed to change that text. So that's awesome. This feature here, stats. Oh, I set a break point. This feature, I didn't even have a stats tab before. So I created a stats view inside Xcode and then inside cursor because it's viewing the folder of files that sh uh, shows up here. And I just asked that, can you create a box that shows the number of days the user has logged something? And that's all I said. I didn't explain how the, how I was saving the data and how the different data models relate to each other and what it logically means. I wonder if I just change the name of these to something like tuna and cat, if it would still understand how they relate to each other. I don't know, but. It worked its magic and it wrote code to query Swift data to pull this back. And then I tried something even harder. I was like, can you calculate the consecutive days that the user has logged something and count it as a streak? And so it did that and it works. And then I tried to go a step further. I said, I want something like this GitHub contribution graph. Where is it? Like you guys know how this looks, right? Something like this, something that I wanted to build for the app. It did something similar, although it doesn't seem to work. So that's where I'm like, okay, maybe I need to take a closer look at what it's doing. The code, I can understand what it's trying to do, um, but it just doesn't work. I haven't dived deeper into why it doesn't work, but that showed me that this is also a great way for learning. If you don't know how to do something, you ask it to do it and then review the code, you can get a sense of how to go about it. Okay, so here's what I've tried to do based on what I've showed you. I've worked on an existing project. I've tried to add some new features to it, modify some of the existing features like the reminders, refactoring code. So this was pretty neat. It saw some um, inefficiencies I did and actually just changed it. And then I was like, oh, where did this code go? And then when I realized oh, it did it differently, that's when I knew it refactored my code. I didn't specifically ask it to do that but it did. But I, I think I can ask it specifically, hey, can you optimize my code? That would work. Now, autocomplete is fast as well. 
you can directly code inside cursor and use it as an ID instead of Xcode. Uh, unfortunately, it doesn't integrate natively into Xcode. So I've, I'm essentially just opening up my folder, which contains all of my files. I can make changes here, apply the changes from AI and save the file. And then in Xcode, it would read, it would pick up the changes essentially. So you can code directly in here and the, the autocomplete is pretty quick. So here, all I've written is VStack and it's thinking that, oh, you, are you trying to add a box for longest streak? And I, I would say that's a pretty reasonable assumption or guess about what I'm trying to do. And you just hit tab, right? Because I have days logged, I have current streak. So could potentially you be looking for longest streak? I'm like, okay, that's pretty smart. I hadn't even thought of that, but good idea. Okay. So I also wanted to talk about what to watch out for. So I just talked about this no native integration with Xcode. And I did some Googling because I wasn't sure how to use it with Xcode. One of the ways is exactly how I'm using it, or just opening up the folder of files, but it's not ideal because if you make an edit in here and then don't save it, right. And you make an edit in Xcode on the same file and you don't save it, you're going to lose work somewhere. So you have to be cautious about keeping the files in sync, like saving it and then switching over to Xcode to work on it so that you're not working on the same file from two different places with, um, unsaved changes. Now I did find other ways to work with Xcode using cursor. So you can abandon Xcode completely. You can work off just the cursor IDE, and then you can compile and run from terminal. I didn't get to doing that, but there are different ways just to let you know. I realized pretty quickly that as I am asking AI to do stuff and applying changes that I could very easily get to a point where my app is broken, or I just don't recognize the, like what the code is or what the code is doing. So I would highly advise that you either you're using source control, you're doing these changes in a new branch, or you have just literally made a copy of your project folder as something anybody can do, right? So source control definitely, or just copy your folder so that you can roll back. Okay. I found some cases where it would apply the code and then it wouldn't compile inside Xcode, but I was able to just say, Hey, it doesn't compile because it's telling me this error. And then it would go back and it would recognize how to fix it. And then it would fix it. So that's something to watch out for. And one thing I started to realize as well is that, and maybe this is not such a big problem if you're working on a team, because you're used to just having multiple people working on the same project, seeing code that you didn't write. But if in this case, if you were like me and you coded every single line of this project, as soon as you start using AI, uh, and just applying these changes to it started becoming like I was looking at someone else's code base. I was losing familiarity with it. So that's something that I experienced as well. Now, what I've yet to explore and that I'm very interested in doing is building an app from scratch in the cursor IDE. I didn't find a way I didn't look very hard or I didn't Google for this, but I don't know how it creates new files for you because sometimes it will create new views. Um, but then I would copy the code and go into Xcode and create a new file and paste the code in there. So I was always creating new files from within Xcode. I'm not sure how to do it within here. If you know, please comment below. Let me know. I, I haven't used it really to explain code. I think this would be really helpful if you're looking at someone else's code base and you can ask it questions like, what does this do? And then we talked about this, learning how to implement something that you don't know how to go about it at all and at least getting a start, kind of like what I showed you here. And building from an image. Now, this is something that I'll talk about in another video. I did this with ChatGPT, and I was also blown away at how you can upload a UI and just have it build from that. Uh, I haven't tried to do something like that inside cursor. All right. So those are my initial impressions. Oh, look, an image button.
Yo. So you could probably do that here too. I haven't done it. But anyways, as I explore more, I will share my findings more. These are my initial impressions. I'm very positive about it. Although I am using a, a pro trial. So I assume that because the free tier, oh, I'll bring this over here. The free tier has 50 slow premium requests. I wonder if these re, re, replenish every month, but this costs money. And right now they give you a free trial, which is why I am on this free trial now. So I think, I guess the question becomes if you are forced to pay for something like this, would it still be worth the money? And that I am, I haven't come to a conclusion yet. All right. Let me know if you've used cursor before and in the comments, let me know what your experience was like. This was my very initial exploration of it. Very positive about it and want to learn more. So hope this was helpful to you, especially if you haven't seen or played with Cursor before. And I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.